Today I'm going to show you how you catch freshwater mussels. Well, g'day and welcome to another episode of Warwick Nailers Boomerang Adventures. Today we're going to go down to the channel and I'm going to show you how you catch freshwater mussels in Australia's waterways. And also I'm going to be having quite a bit of fun doing other things in the channel at the same time and showing you a bit of water life. So stay tuned and I'll catch you at the end of the episode. Well here I am at the channel and I just want to go for a bit of a paddle. It's a nice warm day and it's uh, a really pretty spot so I'll just do a bit of sightseeing and then uh, when I've had enough of that I'm going to have a go and see if I can find some freshwater mussels. And freshwater mussels are very common throughout Australia. They're about this big when they're fully grown and you can eat them and you can use them for bait too. But it's, I just find it fun to just to look for them. So we're going to try a bit of that today and yeah, have a bit of fun. So first we've got to pump up the paddle board. I bought this recently, this thing, and they're really good. They're just starting to take off in Australia, these paddle boards, as a... Um, bit of a recreation and um, yeah they're a lot of fun they're very convenient because they're they're so collapsible and um, a lot easier than um, and taking a kayak or something on the top of your car or from the trailer. Alright, done. Won't forget the keel. Not gonna must control without that. This is very easy with a tailwind. Might be a bit harder coming back. Well, I've only just learned how to use this thing, so I'm pretty shaky on my feet. But it's, uh, you know, I think this is the second time I've been on one and I only bought this, uh, whatever it is, maybe a month ago and um, yeah, I can feel myself getting coordinated already. It's a bit like rollerblading actually, you sort of similar muscles without moving your legs, you just, sort of, just got to brace yourself the whole time. Yeah, so, got to turn around, there's a stake with it. <laughs> Crikey, still getting used to this. Um, there's a stake here. 
I think I can at least I can see the string. There might be a net, and it wasn't me that's done this. So I'll just get out and have a look and see what we've got. Oh yeah. Oh no. But yeah, someone's definitely. Um, yeah, it's been a sharpened steel peg that. And I'd say they've, they've probably lost their net. That's rotted off. And I reckon in there, there's pretty good chance there'd be a net that's slowly rotting away. And it's best um, to pull them out of the water because if that's an opera house net, which is now illegal in, in Victorian waterways, um, they keep on catching yabbies and anything else that will want to go in there to get the yabbies too. And so they're illegal for good reason. And um, yeah, they, they call them an opera house net because they look like uh, something you might see out of Sydney. So I think I'll um, yeah, jump in the water now and see if I can find it. And if I don't, well, We'll have a look at some other things in the water while I'm there. Now I've got to get my strides off again. And um, don't seem to matter what you do when you run a channel or a show like this, at some point you always have to get your dax off. So, anyway, I'll keep it decent. All right, so this, this net that I'm looking for is gonna be close if it's in here. See if I can see through the water. A bit of a feel around. No. I don't think it's here. I think... Yeah, that string wasn't that long, so... It's, um... <laughs> yeah. I just snapped that off and accidentally... Hang on a minute. Here we go. Found it. Look at that. Now that's an abandoned opera house net. So I'm glad to find that. Now these, okay, so opera house nets, see that look like the opera house, Sydney opera house. And yeah, I'll just clean it up a bit. So usually there's a couple of clips one there and one there and um, they these ones have rusted off so they hold that down and usually have your bait um, in a little bag in the side inside here and it's um, they go in there but no no animal can get out of these so once they're in so you get a, a platypus which are very common um, well they're not that common but they're synonymous with Australia and um, They'll go in there and um, we'll never be able to get out and they'll drown because they're, a, well, well they, they got lungs, they use, um, they breathe air so and don't breathe it out of the water. So, um, yeah, well, that's good. I'm glad I found that. But it was open so it probably wasn't going to kill anything. But if I wanted to, I could fix it. Uh, if I want to be illegal, but what I'm going to do is chuck it in the bin. Alright, well, while I'm in here, I'm going to look for some mussels. See if I can get them. Um, you got to feel them with your feet. And in this sort of channel system, you've got 
the water's not very deep, like right out in the middle, it's only going to go up to my waist. And the mussels basically have two spots they go. If they're feeding, they're on the top of this silty stuff, which is sort of just on, just as it turns to mud. And then underneath, well, at least in this soil around here, um, underneath you got the clay, which is that that stuff there. It's a lot. It's a lot um, more solid. And um, I've actually, once I got that stuff, um, took it home and made a made a toy car out of it. And it did all right, but I never had it fired. Now I've got to get in deep enough so I um, can find the muscles, but I don't want to saturate my microphone in the process and you're not going to hear much from then on. Oh, here we go. I reckon I've got one here. Let's see. Got to get him up without... Losing it. Oh, yes. There we go. Oh, it's a dead one. I'll have a look at it anyway. So that's Australia's fresh water mussel shell. And they're quite a pretty, pretty thing, pretty mollusk. And yeah. He's dead, been dead for a while. Um, but it, well, I'll keep looking because um, there's a few. They'll be, they're always sort of come together in little groups. So there'll be some around here. This is interesting here that the, the banks eroded a little bit and formed a little, little tunnel I'd say gabbies often do this sort of thing. They, they'll tunnel into the side to, to hibernate or whatever. And um, they create a, uh, basically like a, a channel between the, the outside and the inside. So I can reach in there. Oh, there's actually a gabby in there. I was right. <laughs> he's uh, got his home in there. He bit me. <laughs> oh. oh, I just felt him swim out from another spot. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been bitten by a yabby for a long, long time. And um, there was one living in here. How funny is that? <laughs> Shame I couldn't get him for you. He just swam, swam out another a spot. There's a tunnel goes back here, one through there. He went out that one. But um, I haven't, oh look, there's a little bit of blood here, I can prove it. <laughs> hey, there we go. Bit of, bit of boomerang adventures blood for you. Uh, well, all in the name of fun, we'll keep going. Oh, look, I've lost my boat. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Go on. And a live one. So. There he is, that. There, living. Australian freshwater mussel. They're quite a pretty sort of thing. They've got a little bit of a pearly uh, mechanism happening here. Um, you can polish these up, I think, and make them look 
look really nice. And I know a bloke who, um, I'm not sure if he succeeded, but he, he put a, a piece of nylon to create an irritant inside the shell and see if he could make pearls out of these sort of mussels. I don't know how successful he was, um, but he went back to practicing medicine, so I don't think he was that successful. Um, we should crack this open. There's heaps of them in here, and um, they breed up in their millions if the conditions are right, so it's okay to have a look at uh, look inside one of these and and um, yeah, see what they look like. They're kind of like a, like a snail, so we'll do that now. I've got a pocket knife on me, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, let's find a spot to smash this. Pretty good, probably just here, I reckon. Yeah. So. so that's the the muscle, the muscle part of the muscle, and I didn't actually didn't expect to explode so easily because um, I've smashed them before and it takes quite a bit of effort and um, so that's it there the it's not bad bait um, it, it's edible but see how that's brown it tastes probably worse than yabbies that have been living in the mud and I already don't like gabbies that have been living in the mud, so I'm never going to eat these things again. I've done it once and um, learnt my lesson. So uh, you could probably put them in a in a uh, fish tank for a few days and let them clean up. And they do actually go a nice blue, sort of a clearish blue colour. But um, even then, um, they're probably not going to be that great. But if you were really hungry, you can eat anything you want. Now it's important to note that at the moment there's a campaign for safety in the channels because they can be quite dangerous places to be swimming in and they're trying to really stamp it out so it's important not to go jumping in because you just don't know what's in the water because it's quite murky often and um, you really don't know what you're stepping into when you go in them so it's not really a place that you want to be silly and uh, taking risks, unnecessary risks so yeah just, just be careful around them It was good till I fell off So it's not the place you want to be carrying on like a bit of an idiot. I'm glad I took my sunnies off. <laughs> <laughs> little stop here, little weir, miniature weir, and it's just feeding the irrigation further down the stream, so one thing that happens at these places, the water goes over uh, from one level to the next, and it's, it leaves a big pocket of air behind the water. I'll get in behind it, and I'll take in the, the other little camera, I've got my pocket here, and see what it's like so that means I've got to get my gear off again Pretty noisy. 
The two days prior to this were really hot, it was over 40 degrees Celsius, so the water was just right, even though that day was about 30. Um, the concrete that I'm sitting on there and uh, that I walked in, it was very slippery, it was covered in algae, so it was really, really dangerous. If you stripped over there, you'd probably do yourself quite a bad injury. And that wall to my left is um, automatic, it moves every now and then, so yeah, I don't recommend anybody to, to go into a spot like this. But um, yeah, it might look like I'm, I'm having a bit of fun, but I just really wanted to show you uh, what it's like inside that spot. So yeah, it might look like fun, but it's actually not. I had a terrible time. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a big thumbs up and turn on the notifications and also welcome to any new subscribers that have just joined the channel. Now this week's winner of Look What I Found on my Facebook competition goes to Matthias from Australia I think because he's taken a nice picture of a bullfinch resting on his finger. So if you haven't seen that go across to Facebook and have a look, it's a great photo. Also, um, don't forget uh, this week I'll be running the competition again, so please send me in a photo or a short video of a natural phenomenon that is from your part of the world that you've taken, because I'd really like to see it, and I'm sure a lot of people across the world and well, everyone that's subscribed to this channel would be interested to see it, so it just brings a bit of life and gets us focusing on some uh, beautiful things around this world that uh, not everybody else will get to see. So thanks for being involved, everyone who did get involved. And also look into my, uh, uh, look at my U uh, not YouTube, um, Instagram account, because I'm active there as well. And I just do little photos and short videos of things that I see around here as well. So um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next uh, YouTube episode, or I'll see you on Facebook and Instagram. See ya.